Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 70th commencement ceremony for Western Governors University. Graduates, families, and friends, thank you for joining us as we celebrate this special occasion. Our ceremony is being recorded and streamed live over the internet, so a special welcome to all of our online participants joining from across the country and around the world. Please silence your cell phones, but keep them nearby, as there will be an opportunity later in the program to share your achievement on social media. Please stand for the processional and remain standing for the national anthem.
twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming still there Oh say does that star spangled banner wave for the land of the free and the home of the Thank you. Please take your seats. We'd like to thank Danelle Gonzalez, who is graduating with us, for uh, beginning with a very moving rendition of our national anthem. We are so grateful for her and her talents. Let's give her another round of applause. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my honor to convene the 2019 WGU commencement in Orlando, Florida. On behalf of the entire university, we welcome our honored graduates and congratulate, congratulate you on contemplating one of life's great achievements. We also extend our warmest welcome to the many family members and friends who are here to support their graduates. In addition, we want to recognize and welcome the many graduates who are participating with us together with their family and friends and watching this event via the live webcast. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> graduates, it is likely that today would not have been possible without friends and family at your side. Would all of you the friends and family of our graduates, please stand up. That's right, all of you on the outside there. Thank you, and we extend all of our appreciation for all the support, guidance, and love that you have shown our graduates. At WGU, we also often have family members who are graduating together. Would these family members please stand and be recognized? What a special occasion it is to see this moment and you celebrate it together. WGU is honored to be recognized year after year as a military-friendly university. We would like to recognize the military members who are graduating. So would the graduates who are active duty, reservists, and veterans please stand to be recognized. Thank you sincerely for your service. And last but not least, if you, our students and alumni, are the lifeblood of this institution, then the faculty and staff are its heart. With you today are many of our WGU faculty mentors and employees, and if you've been a beneficiary of the time and dedication that they put in, into their work, please put your hands together one last time and give them a round of applause when our faculty stand up. Twenty-two years ago, 
WGU was officially founded. 20 years ago, WGU enrolled its first student. The university now has more than 130,000 graduates. Since our last commencement in November of 2018, 8,783 students have completed bachelor's and master's degrees at WGU. Today, we recognize the achievement of 1,254 graduates who are attending the commencement ceremonies here in Orlando. Among these, there are 648 receiving their bachelor's degrees and 606 receiving their master's degrees. You represent 46 states, the District of Columbia, and military installations overseas. Of the 1,254 attending today, nearly one-third are from the great state of Florida. Thank you all for being here. It is truly our privilege to be among all of you and among those, of you, uh, among those who are here in support of you. Let me share some additional facts about our graduating class. 39% of you are the first in your families to earn a college degree, and we extend a special congratulations to you. Your average age is 38, the youngest is 18, and the oldest is 74. Ninety percent of you are over the age of 27, and on average, you completed your master's degree in one year and seven months. I'm pretty certain that you are all overachievers. And, you know, that's impressive. It's inspiring to look at all of you and to consider your achievements, knowing that you've juggled many priorities, faced many challenges along the way, and you are the reason that we have gathered here. And for all of us at WGU, the reason why we, why we believe in the importance of the work that we do. We truly believe in changing the lives of individuals and families, and it is truly an inspiration for each of us here to be with you. Today's commencement celebrates you, our graduates, for setting and accomplishing a significant goal and moving to a new stage of, of your life. You join only 9% of Americans who have achieved a master's degree. Much will be expected of you as you continue your life journey, taking leadership roles in your businesses, in your societies, and in your communities. Education is the greatest predictor of career success. You worked hard to attain an educational milestone that will change the course of your own history and influence, your fu influence future generations. You have aspired to greater things. Thank you for letting all of us at WGU, pl WGU play an important part in the fulfillment of your dream. Congratulations again. I'm pleased to introduce Simon T. Bailey, our commencement speaker. Simon is one of America's top 10 most popular corporate and association speakers on change, leadership, and customer experience. He's worked with more than 1,500 organizations in 45 different countries. As an innovator, educator, executive advisor, and author, he shapes the lives of men and women around the world. Prior to founding his company, Simon held the role of sales director for the world-renowned Disney Institute and worked in hospitality and tourism for 20 years. When Simon is not working, he spends quality time with his two active teenagers, roots for the Buffalo Bills, I'm very sorry, <laughs> but we all have to have our thorns, <laughs> and is an avid moviegoer. He believes his most important role is to be a great dad and to volunteer in serving the least the last and the lost in, the, in society. Please join me in welcoming Simon T. Bailey. Good morning, do me a favor, look at the person you're sitting next to, look him in the eye, and tell him you look marvelous, simply marvelous. <laughs> Congratulations to all of you graduates. I couldn't help but 
think about when you were coming in a number of years ago, my mom and dad loaded the family station wagon and drove me and my brother from Buffalo, New York, down to Atlanta, Georgia, where they dropped me off at Morehouse College. And at the end of my freshman year at Morehouse, they called and said, we don't have the money to send you back to Morehouse, nor do we have money to bring you back home to Buffalo, but we do love you. And uh, <laughs> I mean, realize I didn't quite feel the love. <laughs> So I dropped out of Morehouse, moved into a drug-infested community in the southwest part of Atlanta, Georgia. I only had a mattress on the floor, bright green beanbag from the 70s, a couple of milk crates turned over with a black and white TV on top of it with a hanger hanging out of the back of the TV with a piece of aluminum foil wrapped around the hanger. How many have a visual so far? <laughs> I know some of y'all said, bless his heart, you know, bless his heart. <laughs> And it was probably the lowest point of my life because here I am, 19 years of age, a college dropout, and I eventually did go back to school, got my undergrad, got my master's degree, but I was on the 10-year plan. And uh, my parents said, it took you 10 years to finish your degree. I said, because you didn't pay, but I love you. <laughs> But all of you as graduates today, I know that you are so excited and the families that are here celebrating this amazement uh, achievement that you have accomplished is absolutely awesome. And what I've discovered uh, in matriculating and taking so much time to finish a degree, aren't you grateful for the faculty mentors who came alongside? Since leaving Disney, a lot of my work and research has been around this concept called brilliance. When I first started writing and talking about brilliance, I based it on some of the research work of Dr. Howard Gardner, professor of education at Harvard. And what we discovered is, uh, in Dr. Gardner's work, he said, uh, children up until the age of four are operating at the genius level. The same group of children were studied in their early 20s, and only 10% were still operating at the genius, or what I call the brilliance level. And in their late 20s, early 30s, only 2% were still operating at the genius or brilliance level. So the question that you have like I had, oh brilliant one. You do know that you're sitting next to old brilliant one, right? Just look at your neighbor and say, good morning, oh brilliant one. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm glad you finally recognize. <laughs> you may be slow, but they're worth waiting on. <laughs> but the question you have like I had is, where did this genius or brilliance go? And it didn't go anywhere, but it became buried by a society that says, color within the line, sit down, give it back, you can't do this. And sometimes, I realized that people, because they may not have a degree, they are marginalized. Well, guess what? You have your degree, marginalized no more. <laughs> so if there is one thing I want you to take away just from that particular point is that you weren't born to fit in. You weren't born to do it the way everybody else does it. Thank you for the amazing competency-based model that WGU has because, isn't it amazing? You weren't for, born to fit in, you are, you are a night owl. Do I have any night owls here? And when you understand that, you realize that you were born to be brilliant. I'll never forget, I was working here at Disney and Disney sent me over to Paris to design a leadership program for a thousand leaders out of Barclays Bank out of London. And I was working during the time, going to school, trying to figure it out, had toothpicks in my eyes. I know y'all can relate to that. And I was there on stage speaking before Barclays Bank and, and Lion King had just come out and I said, remember who you are. You are more than what you have become. Something had just come over me. And so people came up to me afterward, and they're like, oh my God, that was phenomenal. And I went back to my room that night and I asked myself three questions. And I want to give to all of you graduates three, three, these three questions because these three questions have become the foundation of my work around the world. Question number one, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? Question number two, what would you do if no one paid you to do it? And question number three, what makes you come alive? That third question came out of a book I was reading at the time written by an author named John Elrich. And in John's book, A Wild at Heart, he says, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive because what the world needs are people who come alive. And the reason I share that with you graduates is that I realized so many people went to work 30 years ago and they settled for a chair, a check, and a cup of coffee in Cubicle Farm and they woke up 30 years later and said, I'm just a bill, well, I'm only a bill and I'm sitting here in Capitol Hill. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
And when I answered those questions, for me, I recognized that it's not who you are that holds you back, it's who you think you're not that holds you back. And everything that you have to succeed is inside of you. So you have matriculated through an amazing university who's been able to bring out the brilliance because the word education comes from a word called educari. Educari means to bring out. So when you begin to understand your brilliance, I want you to say this to me. Say, Simon says, I am brilliant. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm brilliant, but I am a little concerned about you, okay? <laughs> I am brilliant. <laughs> You know, what's so amazing about being here on Disney property, I worked at Disney for seven years, one of the most amazing places to work at, and it took me two years to get hired at Disney, 10 interviews and a 10-page psychological analysis from Gallup, and finally they hired me. So I, I was working here at Disney and I was driving over here this morning and I thought about something that most of you don't know. You are sitting in the middle of an imagination. What do I mean by that? 60 years ago, Walt flew over this property, Disneyland, Disney World, it encompasses about 55,000 acres or 47 square miles. And in what some might call in the country a crop duster plain, he began to survey the land and begin to acquire the land through a series of dummy companies. And on October 1st, 1971, when Magic Kingdom opened, uh, Walt had died December 15th, 1966. And so a gentleman turned to Roy, Walt's brother, and said it would have been great for Walt to be here and to see that Magic Kingdom Disney World has opened. And Roy turned to him and said he did see it, though he may not be physically here. All of you saw this day coming, and you are in the middle of the imagination of a man who didn't believe what everybody else was saying, because sometimes those who don't believe in you are more negative than an undeveloped piece of film. But you persevered, and you've gotten to this point. So I want you to think about this. If the imagination is the movie screen of the mind. What problem have you been created to solve? Because in a world of algorithms, autonomous cars, AI, I submit to you, as much as you hear about artificial intelligence, soul intelligence is faster than AI. And when you understand that, because of everything that you've learned at this great university, you're not here by accident. You weren't born in the 18th century because you weren't needed. You exist now as a graduate of this amazing university because you have been created to solve a problem. I am Simon T. Bailey, and I approve this message. Thank you, Simon. Thank you for reminding us also how important our imaginations are. Uh, I am always blessed to think about the high expectations that we place upon ourselves and how it allows us to dream a little bit bigger, lift our gaze a little bit higher, and achieve things that only we thought possible. I would now like to introduce our graduate speakers. They are Jennifer Knack, Master of Science, Nursing, Leadership, and Management from Becker, Minnesota, and June Lim, Master of Business Administration from Kissimmee, Florida, Please join me in welcoming first to the lectern, Jennifer. Welcome fellow graduates, faculty, family, and friends. I have the honor today of speaking to you about my journey toward earning my master's degree. My higher education journey started off great by earning my associate's degree in nursing through a community college in Minnesota. The plan was then to go back to school for a certified registered nurse anesthetist. I had this goal in mind and it was picture perfect. Nothing was gonna get in my way, or so I thought. I had my first child during my ADN program and then added one more child after that. I attempted taking general education courses through two different universities. 
to achieve my goal. I even met with the Dean for a Nurse Anesthetist program to ensure I was on the right track. I completed training to work in the ICU as a critical care nurse at the acute care facility I worked at. After realizing my passion for ICU, I planned to step down from leadership in the unit that I worked at. Bring in child number three. <laughs> I struggled immensely in completing courses on time and finding the motivation to continue on this path. The thought of finishing my end goal was exhausting and I lost all motivation. I didn't want to complete assignments. I just wanted to snuggle with my three little children. I felt defeated. I felt like a failure, so I quit. Yes, I said it. I quit. I settled with the fact that the traditional path to a graduate degree would not work for me and my new family. I had had my last child, in case you lost track, that's number four, <laughs> and was working in ambulatory care as a site manager. This is the point when I fell in love with leadership. To this day, I am very passionate about it. During this time, my oldest daughter decided she wanted to be a hockey player. She had never seen the inside of a hockey arena, let alone ice skated. <laughs> I will be honest, the first time watching her was rough. At the end of her first practice, I prepared myself for tears and the last time I would ever have to smell that horrific smell of hockey gear. None of that happened. She came off the ice exploding with joy. She was going to be a hockey player. I was shocked. My SUV would never smell the same. <laughs> my second daughter started playing soccer, so now both of my daughters were playing sports. They struggled at times due to feeling like they were not good enough. When they doubted themselves, we talked about what was causing them to feel this way. Nine times out of ten, it was due to them being their own worst enemy. It was during one of our conversations that it struck me. I am my own worst enemy. I had found passion and love for leadership. Why am I not pursuing a degree in it? If it means that much to me, why am I willing to give up on myself so quickly? I learned about WGU through one of my coworkers who was a WGU student. I spoke to my family and decided that this was it. This was the university I was meant to attend. Four months later, I enrolled in my first course with WGU. Through multiple breakdowns, explanations of why I needed to complete an assignment to my children, and breaks to refill my WGU coffee mug, it happened. All of my courses were marked complete. There is nothing more satisfying and fabulous than accomplishing the steps that finally add up to a degree. It feels like winning the lottery, except there is no check. <laughs> and it didn't happen by chance. It happened because of the passion, grit, and dedication you find deep within yourself. All of us sitting here today happen because you believed in yourselves. You are here because when you were faced with challenges, you changed your perception and chose to pursue or persevere and not give up. When I finally finished my degree, there was a celebration of ugly crying, <laughs> jumping and down, up and down with the kiddos, and texting my family the exciting news. I realized that I was no longer going to, going to allow anyone to stand in my way, including myself. I was no longer going to be my own worst enemy. I have gained valuable insight and experience from my children, learning that there are never small successes. Every success is gigantic and deserves a celebration. I am extremely proud of what we all have accomplished, and I am proud to be a WGU alumni. To all my fellow Night Owls, congratulations. Surprise, Mom and Dad. <laughs> my parents didn't know they were actually attending my commencement ceremony today. They also didn't know I was pursuing my MBA. They live about 30 minutes away, so I told them, meet me at Disney, dress nice, you're coming for a photo shoot. <laughs> hi, mom and dad, say hi to the cameras. <laughs> Very few people knew that I was working on a master's degree. My fiance, Yasmina, was one of those who knew. I can't wait to marry you next month. 
We spent countless of hours in the library together, both of us taking classes. And I remember while I was working on financial accounting, she would ask me which of the shade of blue would, would match with a coral slash salmon blush pink bridesmaid's dress. <laughs> I couldn't give her an answer, but luckily there have been no bridezilla moments. <laughs> the second person who knew was my WGU program mentor, Stephanie Robinson. Stephanie, I know you're in Arizona right now and I hope you're watching, but thank you so much for your guidance. Without your help, I don't think I would have been able to be here at this time. I know towards the end there, it kind of got difficult, but you kept me going and kept me to persevere. I really felt supported during my time at WGU. So why did I keep this a secret from so many people, even my parents? More than anything, I wanted to surprise them and make them proud. They're both very successful in their professions, and my challenges pale in comparison to theirs. Actually, my family came from a little town called Bahal, Philippines. We didn't have much growing up. In fact, my mom had to work overseas for most of my childhood. We missed each other for eight years while she was in Saudi Arabia and the United States. She wanted to do this so me and my siblings can go to uh, nicer schools and have a brighter future. In a developing country back then, our means of affordable communication were these small recorded cassette tapes. What it would have given to have Skype or FaceTime back in the day. I remember we would receive these tapes in the mail, usually about a month after it was recorded. At the time, my dad, my sister, and I would huddle up in our rooms, hit play, and listen to that radio to hear my mom's voice. We'd flip the cassette tape and listen to her some more. And at the end, we would also reply with our own recording. We'd hit record, pretend she was in front of us, and talk to the radio. I actually don't know how she would understand those tapes, because mostly it was just my sister and I arguing about <laughs> what to say. <laughs> it was hard not to see her for those eight years. However, the plight of many immigrants was that they usually have to leave their families behind and search for a brighter future. In the year 2000, my dad joined my mom and immigrated to the United States to also look for better job opportunities. At that time, my, sir, my sister and I were entering high school and middle school. They wanted to keep sending us to these nicer schools, so they wanted to work abroad so they could afford it. At that time, we were living with my grandparents and my uncles and, and aunts. Some of them are here today. Thank you for taking very good care of us. It wasn't long after that when my family was fortunate to migrate to the United States. We settled in a little town called Lakehurst, New Jersey. Because they prioritized education when I was a child, I was actually fortunate enough to graduate high school at the age of 16. I remember they had to drop me off to college every day because then I only had a learner's permit. <laughs> at the time, college was tiring. It was very expensive and I hated being dropped off to school. I mean, we're in America now. I've made it, right? So I quit. I mean, I've got mostly jobs that I've applied to, so I just stopped going to school. After a few years, I realized I really didn't make the most op of my opportunities here in the land of opportunities. I felt like I've wasted away all my parents' sacrifice. I wanted a second chance at education my key to unlocking real opportunities. When we moved to Florida in 2007, I wanted to get in the healthcare field. I applied and got a job as a housekeeper. I've held many positions in healthcare since, and along the way I was able to obtain my bachelor's in health service administration. I now currently manage a financial services team at a children's hospital called Demores here in Central Florida. I'm sharing my story because I wanted to share why I went back to school. In fact, I wanted to Google for advice about how best to share it. Google told me to say an inspirational quote. <laughs> but then I got distracted by inspirational memes. <laughs> so let me just leave you with this. To my fellow graduates today, let's remember why we are here. 
Some of you may have earned your degree for your parents. Some of you may have done it for your spouse. Some of you may have done it for your children. Some of you may be doing it for yourselves. So here's to us, and here's to them. We've made it. Congratulations. Truly inspiring. I uh, want to extend my personal you know, thank you to uh, your parents for the sacrifice they made to make the opportunity available for you. And I'm sure that there would be a great round of applause for all those who've made this possible for all of you. There's certainly one thing that I think all of us who may be parents or who are considering being parents have learned that. Uh, that with each individual that you grow to love, you realize that love only expands. That in fact, we uh, have greater capacity for love and for care for those around us. And, uh, and it is truly inspiring to see those who have sacrificed so much to make the opportunities possible for us. We will now recognize each of our master's degree graduates. Would the candidates for master's degrees please rise, including those of you watching by this webcast, wherever you may be. Upon the favorable recommendation of our faculty and the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and Member Governors of Western Governors University, I hereby confer upon you the master's degree you have earned to include the Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, Master of Education, or Master of Science with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. Congratulations and welcome to the community of learned professionals. Our master's graduates wear a hood bearing the color of their discipline. And the following are the leaders from each of our colleges who will now present the diplomas to our graduates. Bruce Stetter, Academic Programs Director, College of Business, Darren Upham, Academic, Academic Operations Vice President, College of Health Professions. Elke Leeds, Academic Vice President, College of Information Technology. And Deborah Eldridge, Academic Vice President, Teachers College. Welcome to the lectern, Bruce. Will the graduates from the College of Business, starting with the first row, please come forward at the direction of the marshals to be recognized individually. Joanna Marie Esquera. Aaron Lawrence. Mary Rogers. Kimberly Marosco. Benjamin Scoggin. Marsha Durrell. Alice Klopstead. Laura Lynn Williams. Julie Adams. Wilson and Ciso. Heather Wilson. Ian Lewis. Kendrick Lair. Heather Conti. Nitin Kuna. Shirley and Fort Bartholomew. Travelers Broadway Parker. Amanda Walton. Sherry Munyon. 
Chloe Smallwood. Freddie Baez. June Lim. Christina Mabry. What? That's you. Congratulations. <laughs> Anna Peterson. Freddie Baez. Adam DeWolf. Christina Mabry. Andrea Ostrovsky Christman. Alex Richards. Richard Kelly. Christina Tag. VJ Adikari. Deanna Wariski. Rodney Jensen. Patrick Peace. Holly Lee. Denise Winkle. Savannah Weiss. Frederick A. Moore the Fourth. Deanna Watkins. Isaac Salazar. Nicole Butler. Teresa Warren. Gina Meski. Kimberly Cornwell. Loretta Heft. Russell Ewing. Jody Wessel. Heather Chingren. Danielle Houston. Erica Slippy. Billy Kennedy. Melissa McBride. Bob Bellorier. Carol Rebo. Carolyn Evangeline. Ronald Martin. Ian Brandon. Marla Houchen. Lauren Taylor Derrick. Lee Hockmuth. Kayla Corley. Jennifer Moika. Keith Morris. Laura Bruce. Jeremy Long. Maggie Misterly. Megan Marvini. Gretchen Madsen. Thomas Hull. Edward O'Brien. Ashley Peoples. Sarah Rust. 
Valerie Kaiser. Jameson Safari. Tiffany Harrell. Mark Titcom. Nicole Jones. Deanna Balcom. John Crawford. Jenny Simmons. Grayson Boshnikov. Annette Andrea Finlayson. Sherry McClanahan. Lou Jane Helwani. Joni Beckham. Denise Harper. Maxine Evans. Trivu Green. Megan Burrell. Heather Meyer. Daniel Tomblin. Ashley Tongret. Letitia Wells. Jessica Dean. Elizabeth Lawson. Charles Hag. Jill Acroft. Lindsay Fondren. Sierra Griffin. Joshua Davis. Tamara Motler. Lynette McCrary. Susan Sorrells. Courtney Grant. Alexandria Kunzler. Pablo Puente. Kiera Broadway. Monica Woodring. Rebecca Sharon. Danielle Thompson. Cynthia Butler. Elizabeth Christine Dorian. Jennifer Hyatt Fisher. Mandy Campbell. Jerry Ballard. Fernando Aragon. Cassandra Oliver. <coughs> Megan Predmore. Lucille Townsend. Kimberly Kraut. Kelly Joyner. Damilare Opatoyinbo. Michelle Bear. Marie Howder. Charity Eco. Erica Mora. Dean Leavitt. Dominique Copeland. Jason Redding. Gina Mariani. Jeffrey Child. Jesse Mower. Candace Jackson. Sean Deegan. 
Brett Jackson. Angela Andre. David Burns. Blake Maccabee. Jasmine Nixon. Hannah Howschilt. Becky Mangan. Valerie Lynn Sharp. Kwame Buiche. Jessica Walker. Jacob Miller. Danyanet Mercuria. Elizabeth Livingood. Josephine Reeder. Daniel Horgan. Marsha Ann Burrell Lewis. Amanda Fancher. Deirdre Rively. Marianne Stizza. Gerald Baker. Cass Henderson. Aleandra Cantu. Austin DeAndre Kaur. Charles Paley. Kara DePaul. Denise Peterson. Yvonne Johnson. Teresa Hanel. Terry Kelly. Raymond Boast. Adam Hall. John Lightfoot. Jackie Purvis. Robert Hoodlett. Mary Beth Kalichi. Ethan Caro. Celia Moore. Michelle Mercado. Timalisa Simpson. William Drake. Ronald Getz. Stephen Belk. Jennifer Sanneman. Peter Buck. Elizabeth Gerhardt. Mark Cormas. David Owens. Libby Martinez. Tamelia Malcolm. Otonio Acevedo. Jessica Malay. Marshall Clower. Sean Ivans. Joseph Ray Dion. Clenice Thompson. Carlos Raul Abarenga Pomada. Erica Williams. Nitin Kana.
Travelers Broadway Parker. Jessica Warren. Jessica Warren. Mary Constantino. Congratulations to all our graduates of the Business College. Will the graduates from the College of Information Technology, starting with the first row, please come forward at the direction of the marshals to be recognized individually. Crystal Lidiker. Lonnie Becknell. Mamta Kinsel. Gita Shetty. Tanya Stevens. Eric Hughes. Todd Stewart. Michael Torres. Nathan Bertram. Krishna Bhutani. Mary Cruz. Saravana Kumar Venkate Shun. Arvind Maharaj. Bodunde Abadasha. Goran Draskovich. Blaze Baker. Sean Justice. Asa Waterstraw. David Rose. Jocelyn Perkins. Eric Makamari. Michael Walker. La Portia Robinson. Lindsay Gibson Flores. Elizabeth Rodas. Teresa Orr. Christopher Williams. Fidel DeForte. Claxton Hagger. Kiera Cooper. Keenan Harris. Eli Forson. Keith Ruberg. Samir Ramal. Mark Yu. Robert Benyaya Duggins. Tasha Means. Yatia Hopkins. Justin Brown. Victoria Willis. William Grossman. Adabola Jokagbola. Ronald Uniti. Sifikile Revels. 
Linda Cabo. Jeffrey P. Brown. Christopher Winter. Congratulations to our graduates of the College of Information Technology. Will the graduates from the College of Health Professions, starting with the first row, please come forward at the direction of the marshals to be recognized individually. Doreen Watson. Marie Evans. Amber Westbrook. Hasina Barnett Jones. Carla Points. Claudia Evans. Lakeisha Monroe. Wendy Thomas. Susan Jaco. Amy Humpert. Andrea Miller. Heidi Tatum. Monica Fouch. Jennifer Remmer. Courtney Allenbach. Amy Moss. Monica Posowitz. CJ Price. Ashley Hurst. Renee Zawicki. Amber Depoy. Kristen Moore. Christy Clark. Elena Padilla. Jelaine Watson. Jennifer Navarro. Cindy Joyce. Ashley Branham. Lisa Foster. Nicole Casey. Christine Thompson. Bernadette Lamana. Heather Kennedy. Cynthia Sweeney. Rinaldo Pineda. Dara Bernal. Sarah Fetzer. Joe Cameron. Jennifer Seymour. Shannon Peterson. Brenda Marie Foster. Melanie Jupe Valdez. Sybil Harrington. Ashley Cavana. Johanna Carrera. James Yearwood. Hoyu Albright. Esmeralda Arias. Leanne Martin. Linda Ekman. 
Peggy Riggs. Lyndon Kalik Godwin. Lois Motley Harris. Sharman Jones. Keely Joe Kraus. Deva Getzinger. Fredeline Quinnett. Ashley Miners. Serena Wright. Maud Helen Lewis Burris. Barbara Keith. Beth Dietrich. Lynn Fant Burke. Sarah Dillard. Shelly Clark. Markeisha Harris. Christine Ladd. Jennifer Livers. Brittany Berger. Shervon Robinson. Lindsay Carlson. Sarah Sweat. Adelina Sandoval. Anna Marie Noyce. Valerie Heaps. Jennifer Kanak. Sarah Cook. Cindy Harvey. Kelly Duresco. Jetta Brzuk. Allison Madden. Lisa Nichols. Diane Fossen. Adina Santos. Kathy Blades. Chandra Simpson. Sharon Hertz. Madeleine Ann Policarpio. Juanita Johnson. Shira Bork. Hilario Babau III. Betsy Sirota. Ida Munson. Sabrina Knowlton. Peggy Penovich. Wendy Hoffmeister. Elizabeth Krupp. Ann Jansen. Heidi Robinson. Patricia Rich. Catherine Rafalowski. Sheila Brand. Christy Wooten. Teresa Thomas. Carolyn Now. Aaron Wiggins. Lisa Gilbert. Marie Ashiel. Samantha Panulo. Stacy Wallach. Renita Green. Bridget Burke. Christine Robinson. 
Sarah Bendel. Jane Sims. Teresa Nwankwo. Natoya Fisher Jones. Yolanda Smith. Caitlin McIntosh. Ashley Walcott. Noreen Fotz. Pamela Silverman. Adam Crosby. Christy Huckabee. Aileen Mazarek. Lori Henry. Vanessa Villaroel. Angela Prince. Michelle Wallweber. Lakeisha Cato. Jane Wildeman. Lynette Parker. Georgette Lorman. Karen Mills. Stephanie Victor. Brittany Gacus Browning. Amy Martinez. Sherry Crise. Odile Germain. Karen Dotson. Christopher Smith. Carla Zimmerman Folk. Sasha Keller. Rebecca Caldwell. Lorraine Levy Mann. Crystal Lopez. Priscilla Kyle. Louis Steinbaum. Marianne Oliva. Dalita Proctor. Patricia Dalbau. Leticia Cano. Abby Krebs. Shannon Eastman. Ann Dean. Lori Delashman. Alyssa Nicole Borgioli. Kimberly Rausch. Sherry Pruitt. Daniela Carrasco. Rebecca Rowe. Robin Gentry Brown. Thelma Lois Merrick. Ashley Trost. Claire McLaughlin. Nicole Liu. Ebony Walton. Deborah Brian Ducharme. Athena Yi. Elizabeth Tews. Sincereet Conti Jackson. Jamie Wells. Christina Rotolo. Heather Davies Layton. Irma Acevedo. 
Amy Christine Davies Jordan. Holly Logue. Beverly Heatley. Sarita Drake. Sharla Peoples. Nicole Loyton. Michelle Poe. Bucky Jones Lombard. Angelique Tolentino Martin. Jennifer Kentammer. Deanna Pilker Pilkerton. Sonia Glasgow. Leslie Godfrey. Erica Paskey. Jordan Wilson. Sijimo Joseph. Sarah Ebers. Callie Rivera. Carrie Cato. Brittany Nemhard. Annalyn Sanchez. Lori Templeton. Jessa Torres Manalastis. Leanne Case. Peter Sawunmi. Cleveland Garnett. Asia Miller. Kimberly Sabatini. Kelly Sanford. Casey Barna. Shirley Baptist. Charmaine McBean. Manitha Dorlius. Amy Adams. Keisha Calazare. Lorena Ensisying May. Shannon Betch. Samantha Archer Wright. Yoli Delise. Tammy Ferris. Sabrina Walker. Shanice Matthews. Victoria Vernon. Reina Paneda Okanzia. Nahitza Neris. Faith Cole. Valentine Nabangwa. Brianna Jordan. Laura Tabasum. Congratulations to all the graduates from our College of Health Professions. And last but not least will the graduates from the Teachers College, starting with the first row, please come forward at the direction of the marshals to be recognized individually.
Lori Adrian Price, Prince. Danelle Gonzalez. Stacy Rich. Angela Ogden. Trakita D. Johnson. Alice Bessonet. Makosha Sparkman. Nelly Orozco Lascano. Margaret Sisler. Whitney Bailey. Ashley Colaruso. Kimberly Hamaker. Jana Greenep. Tiffany Beeler. Karen Lockhart. Christina Rice. Christina Brown. Alicia Prout. Amber Aaron. Megan Murray. Katagina Roba. Scott Larder. Alicia Kynard. Julie Andrea Justimski. Carla Akins. Julie Watson. Nadia Aburish. Cheryl Burton. Mona Rustam. Lisa Pettit. Jacqueline Sullivan. Christine Goodwin. Ashley Kartner. Carolyn Miner. Kimberly Belgrave. Jordan Stenerson. Dana Rodney. Jasmine Johnson. Yalisha Buford. Kristen Bolda. Jamie Steimel. Monique Vinegre. Amanda Tolman. Michelle Wilbanks. Cynthia Jones. Isabel Turner. Crystal Golinski. Annie Lafave. Allison McCarter. Frank Bavone. Adam Bradley. Tina Papillon. Kathy Jo Tacitas. Julie Leachman. Kristen Duro. Lindsley Alvarez. Leanne Lessman. Rachel Heller. Karen Snell. Julie Teresi. Rachel Acosta. Genevieve Lopez Angelo. Shannon Ennis. Travelers Broadway Parker. 
Amy Springer. Heather Redman. Rebecca Ryan. Ashley Kane. Lisa Nez. Lorraine Bowden. Amy Stamen. Catherine Stevens. Jennifer Fuller. Lisa Wilson. Sally McNeil. Jennifer Elzey. Nancy Masonholder. Rachel Ahonen. Jackie Richter. Donica Nicholas. Donna Roberts. Tracy Edwards. June Logan. Kimberly Gunter Boyers. Kara Balkholz. Loretta Poling. Miriam Showalter. Rebecca Moses. Vincent Herbst. Stacy Rogers. Mark Patrick. Michael Ford. Belma Storbeck. Alisa Svedberg. Carlene Stevenson. Catherine Kerr. Omar D. Escobar Torres. Jeremy Perkins. Jessica Warren. Zary Hogan. Congratulations to all of our grads from the Teachers College. Hey everyone, let's recognize our graduates one, one more time, extend our congratulations to them. All of us at WGU are very proud of you and we welcome you into our community of alumni, now 130,000 strong. For many of you, earning your diploma is the fulfillment of a lifelong goal. The academic degree you have earned at WGU will open doors for you and allow you to explore new opportunities. But it's important to remember that commencement is not the end. It represents a new beginning. I encourage you to explore your dreams, dare to discover, and follow your passions, whatever they may be. And whatever you choose to do, do it as well as you possibly can, and great things will follow. Learning is a lifelong journey, and one that is now a habit of your heart and mind. I urge you, as you continue your journey, to reach out to others in pursuit of their dreams. Identify meaningful ways to contribute to your communities and to your neighborhoods. And help us find our way as a unified and united country to a brighter pathway for our children and our children's children. Now, as a sign of the times, it is an opportunity for, to, for us to take a minute and get out your phone. I have mine in my pocket here and take a selfie. <laughs> so I'm going to invite Simon up here to the stage with us.
and we're going to take one with all of you in our background, but please take out your phone, take your photos, and we're going to have you share this on all of your social platforms, and make sure you hashtag it with WGU grad. So Simon and I will get ours up here. Awesome. That's what I like to see. Remember, as you celebrate that, uh, use the hashtag WGU grad. And just as a matter of logistics, for those of you who, who parked at Typhoon Lagoon, there will be shuttles right outside of Veracruz Hall here, as well as outside of the Coronado Ballroom to take you back to your cars. This now concludes our commencement ceremony, and please remain seated until our graduates have filled out. Thank you and have a great afternoon.